Okay, guys. So this is our last video. Um, we are looking at we are looking at problems for the law of cosines. You should have watched the um, two problems on the law of sines that I did, and then done the video on the law of cosines, and taken the quiz and emailed me your results to the quiz. So now you should be familiar with the law of cosines. Um, it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two bc times the cosine of a. And uh, we sing a little song for that. We'll sing that, sing that some in class later. Um, but uh, do remember, these are our three sides of the triangle. And whichever side you are looking for, you're going to use the opposite angle and the cosine of A. So if this is B squared, this will be B. And your two sides here will be A and C, for instance. Um, make sure this is always cosine. I'm always surprised at how many people say this is the law of cosines, but then accidentally put sine here, so be careful of that. <clears throat> you can use this when you can't use law signs. Always try to use law signs first. For instance, if you have side, angle, side, and you don't have an a side and an a opposite angle, or side, 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 you would want to use law cosines. So on this problem, we have a ship travels 60 miles due east. So here's our ship traveling east. And um, after traveling 60 miles, it adjusts its course 15 degrees. Now, I see a lot of times when people draw this one, they try to go 15 degrees in this direction. But remember, it's going to adjust its course, so it's going this direction, and then it needs to, to turn 15 degrees. So this is actually where our 15 degrees is. 60 miles east, and then it turns its course northward, so of course that would be up 15 degrees. So make sure you think about how to draw that. Then it continues for 80 miles in that direction, so this will be a good length. I really should make it clearly look shorter on the 60. Let's move our boat over here. Then the 80. And we end up with this triangle. And um, our question is, how far is the ship from its point of departure? So we are looking for this distance, and I'm going to call that A. So this is our angle A across from little a, and if this is 15 degrees, of course the angle A will be 165 degrees. So you can see we're given a side, an angle, and a side. We don't have any angle on its opposite side, and we can't get it, so that's when we use the law of cosines. So we're looking for A squared equals B squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of a. Our, a. our b squared and c squared are 60 and 80. Minus, remember this is subtraction here, 2 times 60 times 80 times the cosine of the angle, which is 165. And then we put, put that in our calculator. And of course, we're going to have to square root what we get. Square root all of that a squared. And I end up with 138.2 miles. So try that with your calculator. Make sure you agree with the answer I got. A lot of times, the errors on law cosines come from errors in calculating. Okay, then the next one. This one's a little more difficult. This is a bearing problem. A plane flies 675 miles from A to B with a bearing of 75 degrees north, excuse me, east of north. Okay, so we're going to start down here at A. I'm just starting here because I know if I'm moving east of north, I'm probably going to be moving towards this direction. So we want our northern axis, just like we did before. We're going 75 degrees east. So get a, an acute angle in there. And it travels along until we get to B.
Then it flies 540 miles from B to C with a bearing of 32 east of north. Okay, so we're turning. Again, we want another northern axis. So from that direction we were going, we're turning um, to a bearing of east 32 degrees from north. So go from north. Of course, I need to make sure that that is smaller than my 75 degrees. 32 degrees. And so there we go towards C. So it was 675 miles to B and 540 miles to C. So there's our triangle. Crazy obtuse triangle. And we are looking for the straight line distance and bearing from C back to A. So the straight line distance, of course, is going to be little b across from the angle b. And the bearing is going to be up here. Now know that now that we use directions on our bearings, we could find this angle, which is going west of north, or we could find this angle, which is going west of south. Either one would be correct as long as your directions are in there. Um, but we do need to make sure we're at C and we're hitting the line that goes down to A. All right, so what should we do first? Well, if we want to find this distance, we're going to have to use the law of cosines again. Um, we don't have any angles in the triangle yet, but looks like it'd be pretty easy to find angle B. Here we have some consecutive interior angles. So if this angle is 75, this one would be 105. And if we add it to the 32, that angle B there, I'm going to write it down, but here would be 137 degrees for all of angle B. So little b, if we put it in the law of cosines, we're looking for little b, so it's b squared equals the two sides, a, um, a squared, 540 squared, plus c squared, 675 squared, minus 2 times a, 540, times c, 675, times the cosine of the angle B. We'll write it down here, times the cosine of 137 degrees. So, I'm going to do this one on my calculator together. Now, sometimes it's easier to do it all in one step. So, we're going to square root, square root of 540 squared, 675 squared, 2 times 540 times 675 times the cosine of 137. End by parentheses so it's all being square rooted. If I put that in correctly, B would equal 1, 1, 3, 1 1.54 miles. Okay, so if we have 1131.54 miles for B up here, we still need to find the bearing from C back to A. So remember I talked to you about how most of the time when you're looking for bearings, somehow you're going to use an alternate interior or a consecutive interior angle. Now be careful. This angle up here, both of these angles, whichever one you choose to use, is made by this line. Um, we can see the angle 32 it's made by this transversal and these two parallel lines. So we do know that that's 32 degrees, that angle, using our alternate interior angle, so the angles there. And what do we know about this one? 
Well, we can see, we could find this angle here by using law of sines and the triangle. Now, none of these angles are related to the 75 directly because they're all made by this transversal, so be careful of that. So why don't we find this angle up here, we're marking it as theta, but we'd also call it angle C, with the law of sines, and then um, we could subtract both of those angles from 180 to get the angle we're looking for. So if I'm looking for angle C, I'm going to put that on top of the law of sines, the sine of the angle C over the opposite side, and the opposite side, little c, is 675, equals the sine of the angle that we know, which is b, 137, over its opposite side, which we found was 1131.54. So let's punch that one on our, in our calculator. got, multiply the 675 to the other side, so we have 675 times the sine of 137, parentheses, divided by 1131.54, and I'm getting 0.4068, so forth. So now that's the sine of C, and it's better on your calculator instead of trying to round. I need to do now inverse sine, and I'm going to just jump up and grab that number that I need, push enter, so that it's not a round value. And I get 24.0061. Approximately 24 degrees. It is best to put these in degrees, minutes, seconds. So if we want to do 180 degrees minus the angle C we just got, the 24, and subtract out the 32 that we had from the alternate interior angles, I'm going to do 180 minus. The angle I just got, so it's exact. Always best to do that. Minus the 32, and then I'm going to go to math. And um, to angle, DMS is number 8, degrees, minutes, seconds. And I get 123 degrees, 59 minutes. 38 seconds. Now make sure you put the direction that is going west of north. And that's an excellent answer for bearing. Now make sure if I wanted to use the other bearing, I could have added the 24 and 32, and perhaps that would have been easier. That's 56. Of course, I could have made it more exact in degrees, minutes, seconds. 56 degrees, and then this one. I'm going west of south. So that answer would be perfectly acceptable as well. You can pick either one. So that's about as hard as they get on a bearing problem, um, but often the hardest part is drawing it. So you might want to go back and try this problem again later when you've um, kind of got it out of your mind and make sure that you can draw it and get to the same answer. Thank you.